What is going on everyone? Thank you so much for coming back today. Thank you so much for just taking time out of your day just to click on the video. It truly, truly means the world to me. Um, you know, the best way to help support the channel, if you are liking the content that I'm uploading, I'm having a lot of fun doing these videos. Um, because I get to go down these rabbit holes of all these conspiracy theories and, and myths and urban legends, stuff like that. If you do like the content that I'm putting out, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. That's the best way to help support me. Um, if you're not a subscriber of the channel, I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Um, hit the little subscribe button and then out beside that hit that little bell notification and select all and then YouTube will send you a nice little notification on your phone and it'll say so politely it'll say be for Brandon upload a new video um, but now thank you seriously so much um, today let me get into today's video um, so where this all stemmed from is um, last week I uploaded a video about a took it's a um, cursed screenplay or you know you you can be the judge but if you do want to check out that video, I'll have a card up here. Um, you know, I'll have a link for it down in the description as well if you do want to check out that video. Um, but it talks about a movie script that is cursed that has claimed the lives of six um, famous actors. So, if you do want to check that out. But as I'm going through that, uh, you know, I'm reading more and more. And one of my childhood heroes, like, loved his films, was John Candy. Um, so, let's read more about that. And my brother had actually told me some this a long time ago, and I'd read up on it, and I was just, it was very sad news. Um, but I kind of forgotten all about it until I was reading up on a took. And I was like, oh man, that would be a good story to tell. And so, I tried to look up the relationship, because whenever I do these videos, I do like to do my research uh, as much as I possibly can. Because I don't want to get on here and say any false information or misleading information. So I had went through um, other YouTube videos trying to find something because I would like to see, you know, what they're talking about. If I can get something from from the, what they're saying or if I can take away or add my own little bit here. Um, but I couldn't find anything about this whatsoever um, on any YouTube videos. Um, as far as finding anything online, I found one article that talked about this. But I had told my brother that I, you know, basically I can't find anything about this. So, um... I'm going to tell the story that I have gathered, you know, so just going through different news articles, um, stuff online. I even bought the John Hughes book. Um, it, it's not written by John Hughes. It's a, it's written by Kurt Patrick, I think. I, I'll have a picture of it right here. Um, it just goes through his films and he talks a little bit about them. Um, but I thought he would have something there because he does have a section, like a 20 page section of John Candy and his relationship. So I figured he would definitely talk about it. He does not. Um, so, I did buy the book. It is a good read if you do want to read it and you're into the pop culture, stuff like that. Um, but let's just get into today. Let me tell the story. Um, you know, growing up in the 80s, 90s, there was no one bigger, I mean, seriously, to this day, um, that can, has the screenplays that John Hughes has. Um, he would just pump out screenplays. You know, networks said that they'd be working on a film and John Hughes would already have, like, the third and fourth movie wrote. Um, just going, he would just write down. Um, it's rumored that he wrote 16 Candles in a week. Um, Ferris Bueller in, like, days. He wrote those those movies. And those are cult classics. Um, you know, people still watch those today. Um, he was a college dropout. Um, start, basically started his career working in advertising. Um, he did a few odd jobs here and there, but his, um, you know, his main thing he was doing at the time, he was writing jokes, um, uh, for Rodney Dangerfield and Joan Rivers. And what's crazy about it is I went and saw how much he was making. He was making $10 a joke that he wrote, which is just insane that, um, you know, you'd get $10 a joke back then. But, you know, he did land a job with a magazine called National Lampoons. But he started working on National Lampoon's Saturday Morning Parody. Um, and then he also finally got his first like screen credit uh, for writing the script, uh, the screenplay for National Lampoon's Class Reunion. Um, so the studio, Warner Brothers Studio, actually ended up buying the rights uh, to this, this screenplay called Vacation 58. Um, now, they had got it, and then they had had success with Hughes before, so they decided to let Hughes do the screenplay for this vacation movie. National Lampoon's Vacation. Um, now, if you've not seen that movie, 
It's also, I'm going to say this a lot, and I'm sorry, but it, it is one of those classic movies. Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, um, you know, they take their kids, they travel across the country uh, to go to the famous Wally World amusement park. Um, if you haven't seen it, I would highly suggest you watch it. It's it's so good. Um, but up to that point, he writes the script for Vacation. But let's go into John Candy. John Candy was actually born October 31st, 1950, so he was born on Halloween. Um, his father died when he was very, very young. Uh, John Candy was only five years old. Um, his father died at 35 from heart disease. So his mom ended up having to raise him and his brother. Uh, she was a single mom. Uh, they actually moved in with some family members and stuff like that. So, but John thought, since he had this big frame, he was 6'3", um, that he thought he would have a career in football. So he start, actually started off in high school you know, playing varsity football for the offensive lineman. He actually ended up blowing out his knee and decided that that is not what he wants to do. So he actually takes up theater inside the high school, um, has great success doing that. Um... You know, after high school, he had landed some small roles. Um, but his big break came whenever he picked up, when he was cast on this show called Second City. I'm not going to get a lot into Second City. Um, it is truly, truly a, a great show. Um, it's basically the Canadian explosion of all these actors coming over. I would love to do a second video um, talking about Second City, but I'm not going to get into it today. Uh, there are so many actors that came from that show, actors and actresses that came from that show. It's truly remarkable. Um, but he did get a, a recurring role on that show where in 1981, NBC actually picks up Second City um, to air directly right after uh, Saturday Night Live. So that's when Candy, I mean, he's pretty much the standout on the show where he started started to get the roles coming in. So he, in 1981, he did star in the movie Stripes with Bill Murray. He had a role in Splash with Tom Hanks. But also, too, fun fact about John Candy, um, that he actually turned down the role of Louis Tully in the Ghostbusters movie. But he thought that the character should speak with some type of accent. Um, so the writers and directors basically wasn't going for that. So they just passed on Candy for that. And then I think he realized he made a mistake. But he was in the music video for the Ghostbusters theme. Um, so from landing those roles, he auditions. He gets a small part. Um, in a National Lampoon's vacation movie. He was the security guard um, at the Wally World theme park that Chevy Chase actually ends up like basically kidnapping. Not really. But, so, that's where the John Candy, John Hughes world kind of like interlaps. Basically from that point on, John Candy, John Hughes were best friends. They they would go do everything together. Um, you know, story goes they were huge partiers. So, um, that's something they had in common. They both liked to smoke. They both liked to drink. So, but Hughes, uh, being a huge, such a huge fan of John Candy, had roles that was just dedicated to John Candy. Um, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Uncle Buck. You know, those were, you know, screenplays that, you know, he only had one person in mind, and that was John Candy. Um, so, as it was going along through the years, you know, they were, like I said, they were best friends. In 1990, John Hughes writes a script, um... For Home Alone. Um, he wanted Candy to be in it. And this is kind of where the... I guess the friendship kind of went. This is where it started. But Hughes asked Candy uh, not to take a salary for the movie. But how about when the movie comes out, you get 1% of all the earnings for Home Alone. And Candy was like, no, 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 no. Um, I'm doing this as a favor for you. Um, because, like I said, him and Hughes were such best friends together. So, um, John Candy came onto the set. Um, he spent 22 hours. He did it all in one day. So his, um, you know, his role of Gus, uh, the traveling polka um, musician, was all done in one day. Um, and he 100% just ad-libbed his whole scenes. Uh, there was no script for him. He was the only person that was on set that was able to do that. Um, and spent 20, 22 hours doing that. Um, they paid him a total of like $414. So I did the math. And for 22 hours, John Candy worked for $18 an hour um, making this movie. Which is just incredible because you know this movie has went on. I, on some lists, it's voted the best Christmas movie of all time. 
So there's that, which he could have been made so much more money on off of Home Alone just off that one percent. But no, he wanted to do a favor to John to John Hughes because he knew that Hughes would help him out in the future with other projects. But Candy thought that you know doing the favor he would get more roles upcoming in the Hughes movies. Um, but sadly, it really only happened one other time. Um, it was in the movie called Only the Lonely, which wasn't a big, huge blockbuster hit. Um, but it was written by John Hughes, um, kind of again for Candy. Um, and that's whenever a lot of these stuff starts saying that Hughes just stopped returning Candy's phone calls. Um, there was talk about him wanting to, him to be in, Hughes wanting Candy to be in Home Alone 2. But something happened where they just could not work out the details. Um, so Candy was not, he's just not brought in. Um, and then, you know, I think at this point, Candy's starting to get a little sour. Like, you know, what happened to my friend? Um, then I had, I did, basically I did this move for free, thinking that he would, you know, keep things going and end up not. But really the last thing that Hughes truly did without Candy was, uh, the movie Dennis the Menace. Um, he wrote that. And didn't even call John um, about it. So I think that truly hurt John Candy's feelings. Where he just didn't understand. So he was just kind of pissed about it. And rightfully so I would be too. If, you know if I did this favor for my best friend. You know thinking that okay he'll help me out in the future. And you truly just never get that call. Um, so unfortunately they never got a chance to make up. Because on March 4th 1994. Uh, while on filming for the movie Wagons East, John Candy did die at the age of 42 um, of a heart attack. You know, the news of Candy passing was taken very, very hard um, by Hughes. Um, at this point, he had, you know, kind of already started to take a step back because um, he did not want to be working while his kids were growing up. Um, and he also truly... Um, he did say in a quote that he believes that Hollywood killed his friend. So they he believed that Hollywood killed John Candy just by working him so much and stuff like that. Um, Curly Sue was the last movie that John Hughes actually directed. After that, he was pretty much done. He did not want to do any more uh, directing. Him and uh, Jim Belushi just did not get along. They had a lot of feuding on the, on the set. Um, so basically after that, he was done. Um, he was kind of done with Hollywood at that time, too, as well. Um, he's, they're, they're estimated that he still had, like, 15 uh, scripts that just he never did anything with. But, fun fact about John Hughes is he had a script that was just unfinished. He had no clue what to do with it. Um, and so these two brothers came along, purchased the film, kind of finished off the movie the way they wanted to, and that movie ended up being Dumb and Dumber. So... Um, you can thank John Hughes uh, for Dumb and Dumber. But he did go on just to write a few other movies. He did write the movie Dutch, which is another Thanksgiving movie starring Ed O'Neill and Ethan Embry, uh, where he goes and gets um, his basically soon-to-be stepson, brings him home for Thanksgiving. It's a funny movie. Um, 101 Dalmatians, um, and he actually wrote Flubber as well. Um, and so, you know, some of his scripts were still floating around out there, and that... Uh, some of the studios wanted to pick him up. He he wanted no writing credit whatsoever for these movies. So they actually gave him, um, on a lot of these movies, it'll say Screenplay by Edward Dumans. Um, and that's like a penman name from the Count of Monte Crisco, which is it's, it's a fun little tidbit as well. But I know he was taking a step back, so he um, was enjoying life, you know, being a father, being a grandfather. Uh, it wasn't until his granddaughter came home from school and was like, you know, my friends think it's really cool that you uh, created this Ferris Bueller. And so I think that started his wheels turning. Um, but sadly, he never got to act on that. You know, a lot of his family saying that he was wanting to make a comeback, do, you know, start doing a little bit of work here and there. But sadly, he never got the chance to do that because on August 6, 2009, uh, John Hughes did die um, from a heart attack. Um, same as Candy. So it's it's very, very sad to know that, you know, the relationship they had, the best buds, um, you know, they were just icons in the 80s and 90s, and that it ended that way. And I know I'd read this before, but I couldn't find it, um, who said it, or who had published it, but I know I'd read before that 
John Hughes' biggest regret was that he never got to make up with his best friend. Um, never got to tell his best friend that he was sorry. Um, so that's just really, really sad to me. Uh, man, so, but that's the story I have. But guys, drop me a comment down below. Do you still watch any of John Candy's films? Uh, do you even watch any of John Hughes' films? I know you do. So just drop me a comment down below. Let me know which one was your favorite. Mom, I love you. And I'm going to leave you guys with a little quote from Ferris Bueller. I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Thanks, guys.